Now we keep talking about this because catalytic converter thefts are rising even more in Portland and all over the country. And we're following this latest new case caught on camera and in public. Here's Christelle Kumwe. As uh, somebody who works in construction, I'm hearing the sound of metal grinding. That sound so, uh, caught Todd Tesmer's, Tesmer's attention at a Home Depot parking lot in Clackamas County. I'm like, that's interesting. Somebody's fixing their vehicle in the parking lot. Once Todd realized what was actually happening, he pulled out his cell phone and shot this video. You have to see to believe. Or I noticed somebody's underneath the uh, uh, truck uh, yeah. and he's coming out from underneath the truck and he actually busted his saw. He says the man was trying to saw off a parked vehicle's catalytic converter. From the video, it appears the man took off without the part, but with a saw on hand. A bold move considering it was right around 9 in the morning and a thief was parked right in front of the store. Uh, I was actually a little shocked that somebody was that brazen. A lot of these people just don't care. Travis Decker isn't shocked. He's the owner at Atomic Auto Repair Shop in Portland and a catalytic converter theft victim. Uh, somebody cut through the fence and stole the one off my personal car, which was at our shop. Uh, stole them off numerous customer vehicles. The expensive part of the exhaust system contains several precious metals that can sell for thousands by the ounce, which makes the stolen part valuable. Thieves around the country and the world have caught on stealing catalytic converters and selling them for scrap. Decker says catalytic converter shields like this one can be installed as protection with prices ranging from $200 to $500. None of these are a perfect solution. All we're trying to do is deter the theft and make it less can, less easy so that it takes a little bit longer. The biggest thing people can do is make sure that they have a low comprehensive insurance deductible so that when this happens, if it does happen, they don't get hit with a thousand dollars. Where are you up here? Todd yeah. posted his video to social media and garnered tens of thousands of views. Honestly, if nothing ever happens to this guy, at least people are talking about it. Got it. Gresham police say they've arrested the man seen in the video trying to steal the catalytic converter. Earlier this year, Oregon lawmakers passed a bill that would ensure scrap metal businesses only buy or receive catalytic converters from commercial sellers, not thieves. Governor Kate Brown signed the bill, which will take effect in January 2022. I'm Christelle Kumwe for KGW News. Now the other big story, top of mind tomorrow night, thousands of kids are going to go out trick or treating. So we've been talking with experts about what parents need to know this year through COVID-19, including some health recommendations from OHSU. One of our recommendations this is a very strong recommendation is that you wear one that, that kids wear one mask and one mask only. And that and that would be a personal protective mask, not and not two masks. And that means that at that, when they're wearing their protective mask, they shouldn't be wearing their, their Halloween costume mask. So that's Dr. Ben Hoffman. And he also says kids over two should wear their protective gear if they're going to be close to others. For people giving out Halloween candy, Dr. Hoffman says get creative this year for everyone's safety. You know, we saw an incredibly creative group of people last year uh, with shoots and slides and and pulleys and all that sort of stuff. So I would encourage people to do that. So just a couple other tips from OHSU general safety here. Make sure you and your kids are visible with reflective clothing or flashlights, and you should also use sidewalks and crosswalks whenever possible. Dr. Hoffman says it's also a good idea to check out the candy that your kids get or other foods before they eat them. And if you have THC products or other drugs, especially those that look like candy, lock them away so there isn't any accidental mix up. And Washington County Sheriff's Office wants you to talk with your kids about stranger awareness this weekend. Turns out two people in a white Ford work van asked if a student wanted a ride home from Champions Park. That student ran toward other adults and the van drove off. But that type of incident is why deputies say it's really important to remind kids about what to do when strangers approach. As far as some safety tips for uh, parents and children, uh, come up with a family code word. So. A uh, code word that, you know, you and your parents know and maybe an aunt or uncle picking you up and that parent shares that code word uh, with that aunt and uncle. 
And make sure your child knows when they can talk with you about if anything happens rather and that way they can report any incidents right away. Well, driving is the other big safety factor this weekend. Traffic crashes are the leading cause of preventable injuries and deaths in Multnomah County. Leaders urge drivers, cyclists and pedestrians to travel carefully this weekend. A lot of people out there, obviously, and drivers especially can help by slowing down and being mindful. Um, I think the, the Bureau of Transportation has shared that um, they've seen high top end speeding increase uh, in 2020 and 2021. Um, and speed is is an important factor in all crashes, right? It increases the likelihood of a crash. Um, it also affects the survivability of a crash, particularly if a pedestrian is involved. Earlier this year, the Multnomah County Board declared racism a public health crisis, and officials then recognized a pattern in which people of color are more impacted by traffic crashes. They say some of the causes are differences in pavement, speed limits, and a lack of sidewalks in some underserved neighborhoods. All right, well, what do you make of this story here? Oregon was the first state to pass a death with dignity law, allowing doctors to help terminally ill patients end their own lives. And now one of those doctors is suing the state to open up access to non-residents. Our Tim Gordon explains. Oregon's death with dignity or physician assisted suicide law was enacted back in 1994. Since then, nearly 10 other states, including Washington, have passed similar laws, giving terminally ill patients the right to die with their doctor's help. One of those doctors is Nick Gideons, who works in family medicine at OHSU and is the medical director of Kindred Hospice in Portland and Salem. He says Oregon has mostly good rules in place to make sure a patient is terminally ill and capable of making an end of life decision. Decision. So competency and terminality are the primary things, and then there's these safeguards process. And on that list is included being a resident of the state of Oregon. But it is the residency requirement that Dr. Gideons is suing over with help from Right to Die group Compassion and Choices. Gideon says it is all about access, and due to a high percentage of medical facilities in southwest Washington having religious exemptions over end-of-life care, those patients need access to Oregon doctors. We want patients who are eligible for medical aid and dying to be able to pursue that. And to us, this is, you know, particularly Washington, because it's legal there, um, we want to remove the river as a barrier. We want to remove, it's hard enough to go through the process. We'd like to remove this access barrier. The lawsuit names Oregon Governor Kate Brown and calls on the state to strike down the residency requirement as unconstitutional and unfair. If the suit is successful, patients in Washington can be cared for until the end by an Oregon doctor like Gideon's. With the profound relief and relief of suffering that medical aid and dying can provide those selected patients, it pains me the times I've been unable to provide that service to patients who are asking me for it simply because of the geographic border. Tim Gordon, KGW News. Portland police and Crime Stoppers want your help to solve a double homicide from seven years ago. On October 30th, 2014, officers responded to Northeast 114th in Gleason, and they found Jerry and Helen Ephraim there dead. A coroner determined they were killed, but investigators do not know why anyone would want to hurt them, and there are no suspects. So anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers of Oregon, and you could get a cash reward for useful tips. Well, the Portland metro area is changing quickly, and there are some important traffic and safety updates you should know about. Chris McGinnis breaks it all down. Some news on the transportation front. This week, ODOT designated a section of Highway 211 as a new safety corridor. The road between Colton and Malala is dangerous, with a high number of serious crashes and fatalities recently. ODOT is preparing to do what they call a road safety audit to look at solutions. Already, the new designation as a safety corridor will double the cost of a speeding citation. Also in Clackamas County, the new Bus on the Shoulder pilot program kicks off Monday on I-5 between Wilsonville and I-205. The goal is to get more people using public transportation by reducing commute times. Buses will be allowed to drive on the shoulder of the freeway anytime congestion slows traffic down to less than 35 miles an hour, which is daily during peak commuting hours. Similar programs are already having an impact for riders in Vancouver on I-5 and SR-14. And finally, Monday, November 1st, is the start of studded snow tire season in both Oregon and Washington. States allow the use of studded snow tires to navigate winter weather. 
However, Washdot and ODOT strongly recommend the use of studless winter tires. Estimates show that studded snow tires do about eight to ten million dollars in damage to Washington roadways every year. Drivers are required to remove studded tires in both Oregon and Washington on March 31st. And that's your weekend transportation wrap. Chris McGinnis, KGW News.